the first two videos in this series, I showed how contour lines indicate relative differences in elevation and how to recognize basic topographic features such as ridges and valleys. In this video, I'll talk about how topographic maps indicate absolute elevation. Each contour line on a topo map represents an elevation, or vertical distance, from sea level. You probably picked up on this already, but some contour lines include an elevation value. For example, if you're standing somewhere along the contour line indicated by the red arrow, your elevation is 7,300 feet. If you travel the path shown by this red arrow, you're starting at an elevation of 7,300 feet and ending up at 7,400 feet for a vertical gain of 100 feet. In practical terms, your absolute elevation is less of a concern than how much you'll go up or down during the next part of your hike. Contour lines can provide that information. But what if you're standing at the question mark? That contour line doesn't include an elevation value, so to find the elevation, we need to know more about contour lines. On standard U.S. topographic maps, every fifth contour line is thicker, and if there's room, it has an elevation value. Those lines are called index contour lines. Here are three examples. The thinner contour lines between them, with no elevation values, are intermediate contour lines. The sides of this valley include four index contour lines. They're not marked with elevation values, but if you trace out the uppermost index contour line, you'll see that it's part of the 7,300 foot contour line. Previously, we found that if we went from that index contour line to the next higher index contour line, we gained 100 feet. So if we scramble down this slope from the upper index contour line to the lower one, we're dropping 300 feet. That's assuming that contour lines on a map indicate consistent changes in vertical distance. Fortunately for us, that's true. The consistent vertical distance between adjacent contour lines is known as the contour interval. Any contour map you use should include a statement of the contour interval, such as the one shown here. On this map segment, the contour interval is 20 feet, which means that if you drop from the 7400 foot index contour line to the question mark we saw earlier, you drop two contour lines times 20 feet, or 40 feet. 7400 minus 40 is 7360, so the question mark is straddling the 7360 foot contour. You need to be aware that the contour interval can vary from map to map. Here's the contour interval statement from a different map, where the interval is 40 feet. Most of the world's maps actually have contour intervals based on meters, not feet. On this U.S. government map of the Albuquerque area, the contour interval is 50 meters, which is 164 feet. Perhaps you're using map segments without a stated contour interval because you photocopied or printed out part of a map. Or maybe you're looking at a contour map on an electronic device. In such cases, you can calculate the contour interval using the index contour lines. Here, traveling the route shown by the red arrow involves an elevation gain of 100 feet, which you achieve by traveling between two index contour lines that are the standard five contour lines apart. 100 divided by 5 equals 20, so the contour interval on this map is, as I claimed earlier, 20 feet. But let's make sure that's true. If I'm right, traveling one contour line up from the 7300 foot index contour line gets us to the 7320 foot contour line. Traveling two contour lines up from the index contour line should take us to the 7340 foot contour line. Traveling three contour lines up should take us to the 7360 foot contour line. Traveling four contour lines up from the index contour line should take us to the 7380 foot contour line. Traveling five contour lines up from the index contour line should take us to the 7400 foot index contour line. And sure enough, that's where we are. So you can indeed calculate the elevation of intermediate contour lines directly from the index contour lines. One limitation of contour lines is that they don't tell you the elevation for a spot that doesn't fall right on that line. Let's assume that these drawings are of a ridge that you want to traverse during your hike. The top drawing shows the ridge in profile. The bottom drawing shows a contour map of the ridge with a dashed red line to mark your route. It might be handy to know the exact elevations of the three peaks shown in the profile. One way to do that is to put little X's on the map, one for each peak, and mark the elevation next to each. Now look at this spot on the map segment we've been using. 
After watching the previous video in this series, you should recognize it as a knoll, meaning a low bump on the landscape. It's above the 7340 foot contour line, so it's an outlier of the 7360 foot contour line. At the center of the knoll, you can see an X with the elevation nearby. The X does more than mark the spot. If there's an X on a topo map, when you get to that spot, you're likely to find some sort of marker on the ground. If you see an X with the elevation and the letters BM, that's a benchmark or permanent survey marker. When you get there, you'll most likely find a circular bronze marker about the size of the palm of your hand set into the ground. Here's the benchmark on top of Wheeler Peak, the highest point in New Mexico. And here's a close-up. By the way, it's a crime to disturb or remove these markers. On this topo map, the benchmark on Wheeler Peak is marked by a small triangle with a dot inside, not an X. Here's a map segment of Manzano Peak where you can see the same triangle with a dot inside. This one is marked VABM, which stands for Vertical Angle Benchmark. The difference between a VABM and a regular benchmark isn't anything to worry about unless you make maps for a living. Looking back at this map segment, you can see that west of the benchmark marked with an X, there's one marked with a triangle with a dot inside. Again, if you're not a professional surveyor, you just need to know a benchmark when you see one on a map. Not only do they provide an exact elevation, if you find the actual benchmark, you know your exact location. Now look at the elevation marked by the blue arrow. There's no X or triangle or BM, just an intersection and a road. If you don't see the intersection, don't worry. We'll get to that in a later video. Meanwhile, the map is telling you that if you stand in the intersection, your elevation is 6248 feet. You won't find a survey marker, just the road intersection. Now, take a look at Lake Fork Peak. There's an elevation value, but no X or other indication that a benchmark is present. So if you ever get to the top of Lake Fork Peak, don't expect a bronze marker like the one on Wheeler Peak. There's just one more thing I want to say about elevations. At the center of this image is a hill that doesn't have a name, but the elevation, 5263 feet, is indicated. You can refer to that hill military style as Hill 5263. In the next video in this series, I'll wrap up my discussion of contour lines. From there, I'll move on to the other types of information on topographic maps.